What's up, Garage Goons? Once again, it's Tyler with the most trash show on YouTube. Thanks for tuning in. It's Garage Goons, baby. Um, so today, <clears throat> I just wanted to talk about what to look for when joining a gym. And this is obviously going to be fight-centric or MMA-centric or Muay Thai, kickboxing. I'm not talking about, like, a lifting gym, okay? A fitness gym. I'm talking about a fight gym. Um, and things that you should look for and things that you should look out for. Um, the first thing that honestly, and I feel like this doesn't get talked about enough, is what are you going to have fun doing? And I know that's so lame and such a cliche thing, but honestly, even if it's not the cool thing that you're into, like let's say you find a Taekwondo gym, right? And I'm sure you've heard people talk about a bunch of trash, a bunch of junk online about Taekwondo and how why it's the dumbest martial art and why it doesn't work and all this stuff. <clears throat> Look, first of all, Taekwondo guys, like the good ones, are fucking fit. So that's one, okay? Two, okay, I have a soft spot in my heart, admittedly, because the first martial art I started out with when I was a little kid was Taekwondo, okay? I eventually graduated on to other things, right? But that's what got my foot in the doorway, right? So what are you going to have the most fun doing, okay? If you go into a jiu-jitsu gym because everybody online is saying jiu-jitsu, 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 uh, go do that. That's the only martial art. It's all you ever need blah blah blah, but you fucking hate it You're not gonna stick with it and even if you just stick with it You're not gonna learn or you're not going to um, Progress the way you could in another martial art because you hate it and, and or you don't like it You don't get the joy from it This I tell this pe to people all the time and as a coach and somebody that's supposed to be you know Getting people in the gym. I probably shouldn't be saying this, but it is the truth fighting is not for everyone Okay, just straight up. Like, some of y'all watch UFC or boxing or maybe you even watched Glory or K1 back in the day and now I think kickboxing's coming back in a big way with one because they have the um, the small glove Muay Thai on there, which I think is dope. So let's make it a comeback. It's Martial arts as a whole has never been bigger than right fucking now because it is being televised all different types of it, right? Uh, even karate, karate combat, like blowing up. That's unfucking believable. We love it, right? But <clears throat> you might not like getting punched in the face. I mean, nobody likes getting punched in the face, but it does different things to different people. And it's also something that you can get used to to an extent. Like if you spar a lot, punches are going to affect you less. You're not going to freeze up and flinch and, and, and your brain's not going to stop functioning like it like you know two three four five six months in versus your first couple weeks right um but some people never get that flinching getting tight getting overwhelmed instinct out of their body when they're getting hit and that's okay you might like just punching things you might like to only punch things and not get punched back they're almost every gym that teaches like you know, Muay Thai or, or um, kickboxing or boxing will have a cardio insert martial arts name here class. There's cardio kickboxing, there's cardio boxing classes. They're all over the place. And that might be for you. That is a fight, a form of fight gym. It is a form of fighting kind of, and it's a great way to get in shape and you will be better off taking those classes than doing nothing, okay, for you know, I guess a self-defense, if you want to call it, even though I hate that term, perspective. So what are you trying to get? So first thing, what do you love? What are you naturally gravitating towards? Number two, what are you trying to get out of it? Are you trying to compete? Okay. Are you trying to enter contests and win? What kind of contests, right? You might think that you want to do karate because karate combat's the shit, and you join a karate school and you say, I want to compete. And the master says, or uh, I think it's sensei and karate, but the sensei says, oh yeah, no, we'll, we'll sign you up for a karate tournament when, when you're ready and you sign up for it and you do it and you find out, oh my gosh, this is not what I expected at all. Okay. Guys are just going forward, 
tapping, you know, throwing a quick combination, somebody blows a whistle and then it starts over again. What is this? This is not real fighting. This is like tag. Okay. And Taekwondo is a similar thing. It depends on what style you go for, but you might think you're fighting and then you get in the fight and then the rule set is not like a fight, right? So what are you trying to get out of it? Are you trying to compete? Are you trying to compete in a more violent way? Are you trying to compete in a way where it's more about the impact than it is um, per se the technique or the speed or the getting touched without touch aspect, right? If that's your goal, find a, find a Muay Thai gym and, and just be straight up. Be like, hey, listen, I don't know how to compete. I don't know how to sign up, whatever, but that's my goal. Are other guys at this gym competing? Because it's not just enough to say like, hey, I want to compete. Can you do that for me? And ask the coach there. The coach should be honest with you, but the coach should, you should also see the culture of the gym. Are other guys in that gym competing? Are they sparring? Are, does it look like? They're preparing for a fight, right? It's one thing to look great on the bag, look great on the mitts, look great on the tie pads, right? It's another thing entirely to be sparring regularly. Some guys look great on the bag, better than me on the bag. But then when they strap up and we put the mouthpieces in, it's a whole nother story, right? And I'm not, I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but like, I'm not trying to kill anybody in sparring either. But like some guys just fold under the pressure of, I might get hit back in this scenario, even if it's just light technical sparring, right? So that's another thing. Okay, so you need to ask some questions and also be like, hey, I don't know if I want to do this. How long is a free trial? And if there is no free trial, first of all, if they say they you won't, you can't try a class out for free or a day out for free, if it's an MMA gym, Try the whole day. Be like, hey, I want to try the classes and see if I like them and try all of them. The BJJ class, the wrestling class, the Muay Thai class, the boxing class. Let's do all the fuck the gi class. Do all the fucking classes, okay? And see if you like it if it's an MMA school. If it's a striking school, stay for the adult or if you're, you know, a kid, you know, whatever your age range appropriate class is, do the whole fucking class and see if you like it. See if you like the people there, Right? See if you like, um, you know, the culture there. If you see two guys sparring in a gym and it looks like they're trying to kill each other and they've been there a while, is that what you want? Do you want hard, grinded out, brutal sparring where it's like war of attrition, where it's just like, hey, we're just trying to like kill each other in here and, and, and make the, the best, toughest guys. That's I know some gyms that do that, and they have high-level guys. Like, AKA is famous for just having guys beat the fuck out of each other. And, you know, hopefully you're healthy enough come fight night. And if you are, then you're in great shape because you've been fighting for, like, weeks, weeks on end, right? Other places like technical sparring, which is more what I think is beneficial. But there's, I think, a place for both. I think you need to ramp sparring up when you get about a month to two weeks out from a fight. And I think you need to be regularly sparring light technical the whole time, a lot, okay? If you're gonna compete, if not, then it doesn't matter, okay? If it's just fitness, going back to this, if it's just fitness, just find something you absolutely just fall in love with, okay? I don't care if it's Aikido, okay? It doesn't matter if everybody online says it's dumb, because the reality is you getting up and going to some fight gym or dojo somewhere is more activity than you would be doing sitting at home, scratching your balls, eating potato chips on the couch, right? Or or going to a gym and you're not a lifter and you you hate running, you want to do something else that gives you cardio that's not one of those one of those classic normal gym membership bro gym things, right? So find something you love, okay? That's a martial art. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna go get into some red flags right off the bat. First off, first red flag, okay? If they say, listen, there's no free trial, there's no free classes, we don't do that here, you gotta sign up. You, if they make you sign up before you before you try it out, uh, to me that's that's a the crock of shit. I've never seen a legitimate gym that didn't have enough confidence in themselves to say, hey, listen. We let this guy or girl in here for free one time, they're gonna fucking fall in love with it. They're gonna like it enough to try it out. 
Okay, the second thing is, there are some gyms, a lot of them actually, that will lock you into long-term contracts, okay? And it's okay if they give you options. Like, the, like a lot of gyms will say, hey, listen, I'll, we'll make you a deal. If you give us a grand right now, you're covered for 365 days, all access for the year. For a grand, you get 12 months. And sometimes it makes more sense to do that. If you are if you think this is what you want to do, you're going to be there a year anyways. So pay, pay them. So I've done memberships like that before where I paid all the money up front and I got a big time discount. Otherwise, they'll be like, or you could pay 150 bucks a month and it's going to be, you know, to only the adult striking classes or only the adult jujitsu classes or only the gi classes or or it's all access but it's 150 bucks a month which if you do the math 150 times 12 is a lot more than a thousand dollars in a year right so um you know so you could save money that way but if all they say is like hey we're locking you in it's a year-long contract you're paying us this much every single month okay and you're on the books you're on the hook for it that's just how we do it. That's a red flag. You should always have an option to go month to month. You're probably going to pay more for it. But if all they have, it locks you in for a set amount of time. That's bullshit, man. That is bullshit. Okay. Life happens. Shit happens. People um, get hurt. People get pregnant. People uh, have to move. People have to um, travel for work. And if you're unable to say, hey, hey, I need to freeze my membership or I want to cancel temporarily or I want to put a hold on it or I, this gym isn't for me anymore and they're and and they're not saying okay that's fine we totally get it and they're saying hey you you signed up for this whole year okay that's bullshit okay so do, like major red flag right there no free trial and long term locked in contract two major 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 re red flags okay um another red flag would be if and this is to me, if, if there's a lot of ego in the gym, okay? If you go into a gym and guys are not, and, and you do like a free trial, let's say, and hopefully you're asking a lot of questions. You don't know what the fuck is up. You're just trying this stuff out for the first time. You're asking questions. Guys aren't helpful. Guys are like, oh, you know, they give you like the vibe like, hey, I had to learn it on my own or I had to pay my dues. I'm not going to help you out. I'm not going to pull you aside. If there's a culture where everyone's just in it for themselves, there's no team member camaraderie and stuff like that if the coach is basically like shows up when the class starts coaches the class and dips and 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 you can't ask him or her questions before or after class don't try to interrupt class too much but if you really are trying to figure out a technique raise your hand like you're in grade school and say hey listen i need help i can you can you look and tell me if i'm doing this right or, or correct my motion or or the technique so i'm doing it the right way that's totally fine okay if the coaches don't have patience with you and none of the teammates the experienced veterans of the gym are unwilling to kind of work with you and give you kind of pointers here and there when you're drilling okay that is a major major red flag when there's so much ego in the gym you know what that is it's a bunch of pussies that want that are instead of thinking like oh i'm confident in myself i'm the shit i'm good at this you know what I mean? Uh, I'm not worried about it. I'm just trying to make me good. And I don't want anybody else to get on my level. That's what those guys are. Those guys are fucking pussies, all right? Because if you really had the stones, right? You would say, hey, man, the rising tide lifts all ships. So why don't I give game to the new guy? Because who knows what he's going to be like or the new girl? Because who knows what he or she's going to be like in six months? That could make me better. If they get better, that only makes me better. So why don't I help them out? If guys are afraid to help you out, they want to keep all their little secrets, all their little knowledge for themselves because they have fragile egos and weak minds. So that is a I hate that shit. I'm always trying to give game. I'm always trying. I can even I even sometimes annoy my students sometimes when I'm like, hey, try it like this, try this, try that, because I'll throw a lot of stuff at them. Sometimes I go overboard with it, but I would rather be giving up all the game than none at all, because that's whack, bro. We're all here to get better, and if you're going somewhere trying to trying to learn how to fight of all things you shouldn't have to get beat up by somebody and, and not have them at least tell you afterwards what you could have did better or what you need to work on that sucks right so 
the culture of the gym is super important too. Leave your egos at the door because, listen, unless your name is John Jones or Tom Aspinall or, uh, you know, or Usyk, there's somebody on the planet or, or, or Alex Pereira, there's somebody on the planet that's better than you, okay? That's just a fact. There's somebody on this planet right now that's better than you. As bad as you think you are, there's somebody better. So if you have a big ego, wait. Just wait. One day it's going to get checked. Trust me, homie. Everybody gets ego checked. I've been beat the fuck up before. Thought I was the shit, especially when in my early 20s and early on in my MMA career talking that shit. They brought in some guys about to turn pro. I got my ass handed to me on a silver platter. All right? So, and, and by the way, the first couple years of my training, I just got my ass handed me day in and day out until I got better. But those, but the difference is the guys that beat my ass gave me game. And I was I asked for it. I said, go hard. Don't hold back on me. I'm going to be mad if you guys, like, give me your bullshit. I want the good stuff. And then tell me afterwards or during if you have the cardio to talk what I could be doing better, right? So that's the attitude that the guys you're going with have to have that are veterans and that's the attitude that you should have hey i'm here to get better i'm here to learn obviously you don't have to go rock them sock them robots day one like my dumb ass did there's a better smarter way to ramp it up and ask your coach if he thinks you're ready for sparring if he thinks you're ready for competition xyz right but yeah you look for people who give you game and the last thing i'll say um, is obviously it's going to differ area by area so that you might have limited options. There might not be a great option in your area. Um, okay. And so uh, unfortunately you might have to drive somewhere. Okay. One thing I have found and it's not on the gym owner or the coaches or whoever gets a cut of the, of the, of the net med of the, gross uh, profits of the gym, whatever, on the business side, it's not their responsibility to look out for you because they're trying to run a business, right? Their incentive is to run a good gym because if they have a good gym, word gets out and more and more people sign up, okay? But on the other side of that, if you have a really good head coach or, or or owner of the gym who's involved in the gym right not just a brick and mortar i bought this building and now i i you know own this gym but i don't know shit about it but like the the type of gym the type of coach slash gym owners that really care um and i've done this it's an expensive sport mma is expensive muay thai is expensive Jiu-Jitsu is expensive. They're all really expensive because they all got popular in the past five years. Joe Rogan blew it up. Wiz Khalifa blew it up. All these guys started doing, all these cool dudes started talking about do this and do that um, as far as different types of martial arts. And now all of a sudden, there's a bunch of YouTubers in the, in the martial arts. And it's great. It's good. But also, it means that you can't really spend as much as you could in 2000. Uh, for as you as you can now in 2024 everything it's not just inflation it's it's popularity right the prices have tripled and quadrupled in that time so one thing I have done when I was in a tougher time in my life is I said hey I don't know if I can afford this membership but I like this gym can we work something out to where I stay late every day and I disinfect the floors. I stay late every day or I come early and I clean the equipment. I clean the tie pads. I clean the boxing gloves. I I, um, I wash the, the geese of the coaches and, and bring them over. I, um, you know, clean the, hey, clean the bathrooms. Someone's got to do it, right? Otherwise, you know how it goes. People throw up in there. People take shits in there. People pee in there. All those things at a fight gym happen. Blood is in the toilets. Blood is in the sink. I clean the bathrooms. Nobody wants to do it, but somebody's got to do it, right? Uh, I'm willing to, uh, you know, help fix things if they break. Like, you know, like um, help, you know, whatever whatever skills you can bring to the gym. Everybody can clean. Everybody can clean. So start there. But whatever skills you can bring, to, hey, let, listen, work something out with me and know what your budget is. And if your coach is good and he cares about it and and he, he understands, hey, this guy is willing to spend an hour 
that I would have to pay a cleaning service or one of the my coaches that don't want to do that in the gym and do it for free. And all I have to do is, hey, we have like a little handshake deal. His membership's half off or or whatever the case may be, whatever um, you can negotiate, then try that route. Because a lot of good gyms, if you, if you pull the head coach aside and say, hey, can I talk to you in your office? And you don't go blabbing to everybody about the deal you worked out either, okay? And say, hey, I'm willing to, listen, this is, this is what I can afford. I'm willing to clean mats. I'm willing to wash the bathroom. I'm willing to disinfect the equipment. I'm willing to, you know, clean geese. I'm willing to take out the trash, whatever. Can you work with me? I, I think a lot of you guys and girls would be surprised how many people would be like, you know what? We'll work with you. So I know martial arts costs money and that's a big factor for a lot of people. But if you're passionate about it, try it out. Do the free trial class. That's your first green flag. And if you love it, and maybe they say, all right, this is what the membership is, and it's out of your budget. Don't just be sad, tuck your tail, and walk out the door, okay? Try that option, all right? Those are the things you want to look for in a fight gym. And again, it's all about the love for it. If you don't have the love for it, you ain't going to be shit anyways. Nobody hates, Gordon Ryan doesn't hate jujitsu. Alex Pereira doesn't hate kickboxing. If you, the best in the world, fucking love that shit, bro. So, that's what you should do when you're trying to um, look for a fight gym, what you should look for, what you should look out for, and you know, just kind of um, go off of that. So thank you. I know that was a long-winded video, but this is the most trash show on YouTube. I'm gonna cut it off now. Appreciate you, and we are out of this bitch.